What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel once again. So I've had numerous people ask me how I create my height maps or depth maps, depending on what you want to call it. They both basically mean the same thing. But here you can see in the upper right hand corner is this grayscale image of a little puppy. And this was based off of a 3D model that I did. And I will be showing you how to create this height map. So let's go ahead, let's jump right in and let's get started. So for this, I will be using Blender, and I am on version 4.0. Now there is a newer version available, I just haven't downloaded it yet. I will have my screencast keys turned on in this bottom left-hand corner, in case you need help following along as well. So I'm going to try and keep this as simple and easy to follow for those of you that may be new to Blender, so bear with me here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into File and just start a brand new scene, and this is what it's going to look like when you first open up Blender and what you have. So you have your cube, you have your camera, and you have your light. I'm going to just go ahead, left click and drag, hover over the cube and the light, and just press delete on the keyboard. Now I could go into file and import my STL, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use one of their meshes that are already inside of Blender, and I will just use their monkey, Suzanne. So if I just go up to add, Click on Mesh, scroll down to Monkey, and I'll insert that into my workspace. And now I will just scale this up a little bit just so you can see this a little bit better. I'll just click S on the keyboard and scale it up to about there. Now I'll also go ahead, I'm going to click on Modifiers, add a modifier, I'm going to generate a subdivision surface just to smooth this out a little bit so it doesn't look as blocky, and I'm just going to set the level to 2 and click the arrow and I'll click apply. Now that we have our monkey in our workspace, I can go ahead, I'm going to rotate him a little bit and just rotate it on the axes so he's looking straight up, more or less. And if I click on this little wheel, I can click on Z and see what I'm looking at. And I can rotate him along different axes and well, and let's make him so he's looking kind of down and off to the side a little bit, something like that. So now what I want to do is go ahead and click on this camera. And I want to position it to where it's over the monkey. So over here we have item, tool, view. If you don't see this, you can press N on your keyboard and that shows and hides it. And there's a little arrow which you can click on as well to bring it up. So with it open and my camera selected, I have location, rotation, and scale. I'm going to just hold down shift, highlight all of those, and I want to make those zero. I'm going to do the same thing with rotation. Click and drag, click zero, and set that so now it's straight pointing up and down. If I click on the little move, I can move up the Z axis, and now you can see our camera is pointing straight down. And if I click on this little camera button, I can toggle it, and I can see what the camera is looking at. So now on the right hand side, I want to head over and change some of these settings in here. As you can see, we have tool, render, output. I'm going to go and change a few of these settings. Under output, I'm going to go and change the resolution. And instead of 1920 by 1080, I'm going to change this to 512 by 512. And again, if I hold down shift, I can click and drag over both of these and just set these to 512. Now normally I set these a lot higher, usually around 2000 when I'm making my height maps, but for this I'm just going to set it at 512, and you'll see why in a little while. So the next thing I want to do is scroll down under Output. You want to change the color depth from 8-bit to 16-bit. So I'll click on that, and I'm going to change the compression from 15%, and I'm just going to set that to 0. Now what I want to do is go ahead under view layer and I will click on the Z and make sure that is checked. And now with our camera still selected, I'm going to click on this little camera data. Now if you don't see this icon here, it's probably because you don't have it selected. You might have something else selected. And as you can see, the camera data has disappeared. So make sure you're on the camera and have that selected. So with that selected, I will go ahead and under type, instead of perspective, I'm going to change that to orthographic. And as you can see, 
this just changed and made it really wide and much bigger. I'll do that again. And if I go and toggle back into our camera view, you can see that that changes as well. And so we want to stay in this orthographic view and have this camera toggled on. And I'm going to change this, which is basically zooming in and out. And I want to set this to where it's pretty much centered. As you can see on the left, it is cutting it off a little bit. But I can easily fix that by going into view, clicking on camera to view. And if I hold down shift and middle mouse click, I can move that over kind of wherever I want. But I'll try and get that kind of right in the center. And maybe I'll just zoom out a little bit more just because. So right there looks about good. And now we just need to change these two other settings, the clip start and end. And for the clip start, you just want to set that to zero. Now it won't be zero. It's going to go to 0 0.000001. And on the end, I'm going to just click and drag this all the way back down to zero. And I'll slowly bring it up until the monkey comes into view. And I want to set this to where it covers everything that I want for the map. And so right about there, 6.8 seems good. Anything more, I don't see anything else. But if I go less, it starts to chop it off a little bit. So 6.8 seems good for that. So now you basically have everything set up. Now what you want to do is go ahead, and I can just click on Render Image. And as you can see, we have this outline of the monkey. I'll go ahead and I'll close that. And now I want to go into this compositing tab in the top. I'll click on that. I'm going to just move this down because I don't need it. And I'll click on this little checkbox that says use nodes. And now you can see I have two options in here, the render layers node and the composite node. I don't need to use this composite node right now. So I'm just going to unhook it. And as you can see, if I do click on this little world, it will make this disappear. So if you don't see it, just click on it and make sure that it pops up. Not really a big deal, but if you don't see it, that's okay. Now what I wanna do is I wanna add in a viewer node. So I could just hit Shift A on the keyboard, or I can go up into Add. I'm going to go to Output, and I'll click on Viewer. This brings in this viewer node. And I can just go ahead and I can connect the depth right over to the image. And I can move this out of the way, that way you don't see it. This was the reason though that I set the 512 by 512 instead of changing it to something higher because if I set it to something higher, it's going to take up this entire screen and it's going to look really big. So that's the reason why for this tutorial, I just set this at 512. Now also, the reason I clicked on the Z is because if you don't, that depth will go away and you won't be able to connect that to the image. So make sure that your Z is selected, that way you are able to connect the depth going to the image. So now that we have that set up, I'm going to add in two more nodes. I'm going to just click on Shift A again, or you can also go into Add. We're going to go to Utilities and click on Normalize. And I can just hover this until it goes right onto that white line. You see it change colors. And now you see our depth map is starting to look a lot better. However, it is reversed and we actually want it to be the opposite. We want the black on the bottom and we want the white to be on top, which will be our highest spots. So again, I'm going to just hit Shift A and I want to invert this. So I'll click on that. Again, I can hover it to where it turns the line white, and I'll set that right in between as well. And now you can see this is much better. That's how it's supposed to look to a point. There is one more thing we have to do, and some people will tell you that you should add in a gamma or change the levels and do that, but don't do that as it's just going to mess up your height map and it's not going to look how it's supposed to look. What you want to do is actually head back over into Render, Scroll all the way down to where you see color management. And you want to change your display device. Instead of sRGB, change this to display P3. And then 
Instead of standard, I want to set this to raw because we want to capture the raw data. And that's basically it. That's all you really need to do to get this set up and you'll have a perfect height map every single time. Now I can go in and I can just add this in as well into our compositor. That way, if I want to render it, it will actually show up how I want it to. All you need to do from there is just save it. I can go into image and click save. Or from here, if you didn't connect that, you could just go and click on viewer. And if you scroll up to node, you can save the image right here as well. So I'll go ahead, I'll click on save image. So now I'll just save this monkey file and I could change the format to bitmap, PNG, JPEG. I normally use TIFF, but for this, I'm just gonna use JPEG and I'll just rename this to monkey. And I'll click save. Now there is one more thing you can do. Some people don't like the black background. And if you don't want that there, you can easily remove it. And all you need to do is head back over on the right and under render, I'm still here. Go down and go to film and just click on this transparent. And then you just need to go over from alpha and drag your line over to alpha. And now if we re-render that, you can see that it has disappeared. So then you can simply save that as well. Again, if you don't want the background and just resave it. And I can just name this monkey two. And then it won't have that black background. So now that we have finished setting up our height map, that's basically it. I would recommend going into file and just saving this as a blank, you know, template kind of file. That way you can easily go back into layout and just swap out a model with a new one in case you want to create a new height map without having to go through and change all your settings again. Now you will have to probably adjust your camera a little bit and those settings, but for the rest of it, you won't have to change because you'll already have it saved. Now if you'd like to test out your height map, I will show you how you can easily do that. I'm just gonna go into file, click on new, go to general, don't save that. I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna click on this cube. I'm gonna head over into sculpting. I'm going to just rotate this so I have a front view. It doesn't really matter, you could do side view. But I'm going to hit R on the keyboard and I'm going to remesh this just to have a lot smaller geometry. And let's change it to, I don't know, 0.5. I'll hit Control R and that will remesh it to what I want it to be. If I click on this little viewport shading, this little wire wireframe, I can see that now I have a lot more geometry than before. So I can just go ahead, I'll click on, let's just say draw. I'm going to come down into texture, I'll click on new, and I'm going to open up our little monkey, and either one should be fine. I'll just click on the first one, Click on open. And now if I go back into tool, this is our brush mode. I'll click under texture and under tiled, I'm just going to set this to view plane. And along with that, under hardness and strength, I'm going to just bump these all the way up. I'll click F, that will resize my brush. And now if I'm on one of the sides, I can click on it and see our monkey. And I can keep clicking and make monkeys all over the place. So if you have your strength set down lower and your hardness set down lower, if I click on it now, you can see now that it's really faint. But as I bump it up more, you can see that it starts to come in ooh, a little bit different. And again, if I change the strength and bump that up more, now you can see that it's a lot better in how it's supposed to be. Now, if you'd like to share your height map with others, you can easily do so. I usually use 3dgrayscale.com. It is very, very simple to use. All you need to do is create an account, upload your image, set a price if you'd like to charge for it or set it to zero. And that's pretty much it. Upload your image and you're all set. So definitely a great place to go if you're looking to download height maps or if you'd like to upload your own and share them with everybody else. So there you have it, everybody. That's how I create my height maps. 
I hope this was easy enough to follow along, but you can always go back and rewatch it again. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to just leave them in the comment section down below. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. And if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, get notified of all the new videos that come out. But as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.